I rejoice in your disposition to argue the Vietnam question, especially when I recognize what an act of self-control this must uh, involve. It does. Sure. It really does. Sure. I mean, I think and, that this is the kind of well. issue where... very well. well. No. Sometimes I lose my temper. <laughs> Maybe not tonight. Maybe not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because uh, if you would, I'd smash you in the goddamn face. Uh. <laughs> and what brought us to South Vietnam in the first instance, uh, in my judgment, was clearly uh, a, an uninterested, or I should say disinterested, a concern for the uh, uh, stability and possibilities of a region of the world. What, uh, to which what, we period, about about what, what period do you feel that we had this disinterested relationship with Vietnam? Well, right now. No, at what period did we have it? Did it begin, let's say, 1951, for example? When, well, we, when the State Department bulletin points out that we must help the French uh, <clears throat> reconquer their uh, former colony and we must eradicate all Vietnamese resistance down to its last roots in order well, to reestablish I, I, I the French in power, wish, was that yeah, to, to increase my vulnerability, I wish we had uh, helped the French. We did. We, we, we supported but not them. Sufficiently. But, not sufficiently. Well, but, There's no uh, point in helping but, somebody but hard, it's hard, insufficiently. It was hardly disinterested when we attempted as, you know, with, with tremendous uh, uh, support, in fact, to reinstate French imperialism in South Vietnam. Now, it was disinterested in this sense, and, and I think this is an important distinction for you to touch on your book. It's a disinterested act uh, if of my attempt to help or your attempt to help a particular nation is in order to spare you the possibility of a great ordeal in the future mm. uh, which will harm you, your family, your children, oh, yes, your republic. And in that now, sense, not, uh, Nazi now, Germany was also uh, disinterested. Yeah, in, After all, Nazi Germany was conquering Eastern yeah, Europe right. only in order to advance the right. uh, values of sure. Christian spiritual civilization and to no, 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 restore no, no, the Slavs no, 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 to their no, no, rightful well, home and so on and so forth. Uh, totally right, disinterested. Look, I follow you. Yeah. I follow you. Yeah. But uh, if, if you want me to pursue that digression, I will. Okay. But, uh, mm -hmm. but let's suspend it for a moment. Okay. I, I'm distinguishing that kind of disinterestedness between the kind of... With but that's not a kind, kind of, of disinterestedness. That, you see, that's, that's something which includes as a special case every case of military aggression and colonialism in history. It's all disinterested in your sense. Well, all right, let, let me simply rest my case by saying that there is an observable distinction by intelligent men between a country... Uh, that reaches out and interferes with the affairs of another country uh, because it has reason to believe that a failure to do so will result in universal misery, and that country which reaches out and interferes with another country because it wants to establish Coca-Cola plants there and chase national banks and, and, and whatever and exploit it. Now, that is uh, an observable It's a conceptual distinction. Dis well, let's distinguish between a conceptual okay. distinction well, and I'm a factual I'm prepared distinction. To do that. All right. It is a conceptual yeah. distinction, yeah. but in actual fact, the history of colonialism shows that these two motivations can uh, coincide. That is practically every, I mean, there are exceptions, you know, the, probably the Belgians and, and the Congo are an exception. But by and large, the major imperialist ventures have been in the economic, uh, in the material interest or in the perceived material no, I'm interest. I'm not interested in the interest mathematics of the, but well, I'm what, interested, I, I, let, me, let me finish. You have already conceded that it's not merely a conceptual difference. Yeah, I say it is. There are exceptions. There are a few exceptions. All right. Like, say, okay, okay. We're, we're, but right, let's talk about the exceptions then. Well, well no, but the, the exceptions I, are at the difference. No, wait a minute. The exceptions, I, I mentioned, for example, the Belgians in the Congo. Mm -hmm. There they didn't have, they didn't even pretend to have a civilizing mission. Mm -hmm. There it was pure material self-interest. These are the exceptions. There are, as far as I know, no exceptions on the other side. There are, there are, I mean, maybe I've left out a case of history, but as I see the history of colonialism, the great mass of cases are cases where a powerful country was working in its perceived material self-interest and was covering what it was doing to itself and to the world with uh, very pleasant phrases about uh, preserving Christian values or helping the poor benighted natives or one thing or another. Now, there are a few exceptions where there was pure predatory imperialism. No, not even any pretense of doing anything, but these are quite rare. But uh, it, is, it is also true, and I think manifestly true, uh, that uh, uh, there have been interferences with the affairs of other nations whose purposes were, in my judgment, manifestly benign. For example? Well, for, for instance, the Truman Doctrine. Oh, I don't think that was manifestly benign at all. That was an attempt to well, the Greeks develop an organ. I think the, the, the Greek the, situation the, 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 was benign, the, the, not at all. We were I say to the Greeks' testimony is more interesting to me than yours. Which Greek testimony? <laughs> the, testimony the testimony of the, the tes thousands of people who were thrown into jail and... Uh, well, know, not, not, no, not, I, I grant not the testimony of the Greek communists who were beaten. Or the Greek peasants yeah. who were... Well, know, I, I, there again, is it a conceptual difference that uh, between the person who desires a life under some kind of freedom and one who desires life under some kind of... Who, who, was uh, it under the, communism? Uh, well, uh, no, for, because there's no, there's no such opposition in, Greek, there w in Greece. There was a distinction between a very repressive regime, which we instituted in 1946, 
and another regime, I don't know what it would have been, that would have grown out of a victory of the so-called communists. Now, if uh, you see, what we did was had nothing to do with freedom. The, 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 the number of people who were slaughtered in Greece, first by the communist insurgency, then by the Nazis, then again by the communists, the, uh, add the up Nazi to an enormous percent. Communist insurgency before the Nazis? Uh, Which uh, one not insurgency, about? conquest. C communist conquest before the Nazis uh, Communist in insurgency. Prior to the Nazis the, the, the in civil, the, Yes, the civil war of the uh, early 40s. My point, early, my, my prior point to the is Nazis? The, the Greeks, no, uh, your history is quite no, confused. There. No, there was no communist insurgency prior to the Nazis. There were communist resistance bands well, that fought a, against this, the Nazis. This is a matter of nomenclature. The point yeah. is that the the 40-year-old or the the 45-year-old Greek has fought three times mm -hmm. uh, in uh, certain ventures. They in one of which uh, they acknowledge that we bailed who, who them they? out. Uh, who is they? The rulers well, of Greece yeah. acknowledge that. No, no, those are the people. Oh, of, I'm, not, of I'm quite unaware of that. I'm quite unaware that the people of Greece have well, spoken even, on this even, issue. Even Papandreou, you like him, I assume, because he hates us. No, no, no. Pa pa not at all. George Papandreou Pap was one of the people who I'm was. Talking who about, we and yeah, and I'm talking about Andrea, which makes it even. Because Andreas Papandreou is both, very, both on record as being grateful to President Truman for his intervention in that part of the world in 1947. Well, in that case, I disagree with him on that issue. I, mean, I really yeah, do. I think we had yeah. no right to intervene in Greece in 1947. Why did we right pull out moment, of the Philippines, for instance? We pulled out of the Philippines because it became a bad investment. We Why? Because American, uh, Amer if you look, American agricultural interests were very much opposed to the, uh, back in the, in the mid-30s, they were very strongly opposed to the uh, free trade relationships which allowed Philippine crops to compete with them. That's why we pulled out of the Philippines. Why do, they, why do these agricultural interests authorize us to intervene in South Vietnam? They didn't. If you consider this, this is because a, we didn't intervene on the, the critical dimension. No, I say that in the Philippines it was the critical dimension. Look, the world is a complex place. I'm aware of there it. are certain <laughs> interests that were involved. MIT in our, is a complex place. Well, there were certain <laughs> interests that were involved in our Philippine venture. There are different <clears throat> interests that are involved in our Vietnam venture. You mm -hmm. see, our Vietnam. Don't forget that with the Second World War, America's imperial interests expanded enormously. I mean, prior to the Second World War, we were sort of a marginal imperialist power, except for the Monroe Doctrine. But since the Second World War, we became the world's major imperialist power. And Vietnam is simply one piece of an attempt to construct a very large integrated world system, yeah. of which Greece was another piece. Well, first of all, uh, th you've now mentioned martial aid for the first time. And martial, aid ha martial plan aid has to be distinguished quite sharply from the Truman Doctrine. Why? Why? Because the Truman Doctrine was a doctrine of military intervention. And the Marshall Plan was our first attempt at a major but aid But you do understand just, that sometimes a, a soldier can be as useful as a bushel of wheat, don't you? No, look, nevertheless, if we're going to be at all clear about the American role, we're certainly going to distinguish between military intervention and economic intervention. They're mm -hmm. very different in the way they function. Now, the fact of the matter is that neither was disinterested in your sense, I don't think, but they're very different in the impact that they had. Uh, the Truman Doctrine, I think, was a disastrous venture. I think the Marshall Plan, uh, was arguable. You're, you're talking the about the dream world. The real world uh -huh. is one, because the real world is one in which the alternatives were bringing, uh, coming with a bayonet, which is on an American rifle held by an American-backed uh, Greek soldier, and the alternative to that was giving the kind of aid which was used, in fact, to construct the kind of society in Western Europe that we wanted to see develop there. Now, these are two very different things. It's a very different thing to introduce, uh, uh, to run for the Greek army uh, a counterinsurgency program with uh, military support and many military men involved. That's one kind of thing, one sort of repression. But, but look, now let's, let's be careful again. I mean, there's a difference between... First of all, I'm opposed to military aid to other countries, whether by us or by the Soviet Why? Union. Well, let's come back to that because it's a more important thing. And that is that I'm even far more opposed to the uh, imposition of regimes by foreign troops. Now, in the case of Germany, let's say, in the case of France, the... Uh, the uh, Pétain government, the Pétain Laval government, the Vichy government was supported by German troops. Mm -hmm. Had the German, they weren't throughout the country necessarily because there was certainly indigenous support, but there's no question that if German military force had been withdrawn to the other side of the Rhine, uh, then there would have been a, an overthrow of the Vichy government and France would have had some different form of government. Now in that case, our invasion of France was, uh, whether one likes it or not, was, is it was in reaction to an occupying external force. It just pure confusion to identify that with the case of Greece when we were trying to liberate, uh, we were trying to select the kind of society that Greek, Greece would have and we were trying to save the rulers that we had designated as appropriate from their own population. In your book, uh, and that's why you're not willing to, to be consistent in carrying out this argument, you, you're constantly talking about our satellizing of places like uh, Cuba, 
and the Dominican Republic and so on and so forth, mm. uh, and yet we never occupied them oh, in the sense sent, in which you're oh, talking about. Well, well, we never occupied the Dominican Republic. We sent 25,000 troops there in 1965. No, in no, an I, I, no, I'm talking about pre... I'm, I'm talking well, about... Well, the American Marines were in there dozens well, of times oh, I, let, let, I think I mean, you're being evasive, and I don't think you want to be. No, let no, me no, ask you I mean, this. Is it possible? It is not evasive at all. Is it I mean, possible? You know, we just simply repeatedly no. sent troops to... Is it possible? Nicaragua, the Dominican Republic, Cuba, etc., etc. If you, if you want to be serious about it, there's more evidence that South Vietnam tried to colonize North Vietnam than conversely. In fact, South Viet... Well, look, South Vietnamese commandos were going... Uh, military forces, regular military forces, were going north... Uh, considerably earlier than, than the time when we even proclaimed that the infiltration began from north to south. Did they bump into the refugees coming south? The refugees were coming south in, uh, were going in both directions, in oh. fact, in 1954-55, and according, at least according to Bernard Fall, the uh, uh, commandos began going north in 56 or 57. The first claimed infiltration from the north was in 59, and that was South Vietnamese coming south. So, if we, you know, if one wants to talk about, again, the real world... But the communist, communist imperialists, by the use of terrorism, by the use of by the deprivation of freedom, uh, have contributed to the continuing bloodshed. And the sad thing about it is not only the bloodshed, but the fact that they seem to dispossess you of the power of rational May I, may I say something? Sure. sure. I think that's about 5% true, mm -hmm. and about, or maybe 10% true. It certainly well, is true. Why do you give that? Uh, may I complete a sentence? Sure. I mean, it's, it's perfectly true that there were areas of the world, in particular Eastern Europe, where, uh, where Stalinist imperialism uh, uh, very brutally uh, took control and still maintains control. But there are also very vast areas of the world where we were doing the same thing. And uh, there's quite an interplay in the Cold War. You see, the, what you just described is a, I believe, a mythology about the Cold War, which might have been tenable ten years ago, but which is quite inconsistent with contemporary scholarship. Ask a check. Ask, ask a Guatemalan, ask a Dominican, uh, ask President of the Dominican Republic, ask, you know, ask a, uh, you don't, ask you, a person from well, South Vietnam, you know, ask a yeah, Thai. And yes, I was invited and was there for one, uh, one program, and that was it. Uh, you can see the program, I understand it's been, uh, it now appears on the internet and so on. Uh, at the end, he said he was pretty angry. He said he would invite me back, but of course I never heard from him again. Uh, he was uh, he was the you know, maybe the leading figure in the uh, so-called conservative movement. I don't think the term conservative is appropriate, but what's called the conservative movement, he was maybe its leading figure. He was maybe its leading intellectual. His journal was the House Journal. Uh, uh, he was considered not by me, but he was considered to be uh, witty, articulate, uh, knowledgeable, and so on, and much respected. Again, not by me, but I'm giving the general impression. Uh, the, what you're calling his successors, I assume you mean the so-called neoconservatives. I mean, they're even farther from conservatism. Uh, they're just extreme radical nationalists. Uh, uh, Wolfowitz, uh, Pearl, uh, Cheney, uh, the rest of them. Uh, it, it's, it's defaming conservatism to associate them with conservatism. Uh, conservatism has an honorable tradition, but it's not that. Uh, the same is true of Reagan. Uh, Reagan uh, uh, was uh, uh, believed in uh, military violence and destruction. He, Central America he virtually destroyed. He supported uh, South Africa's uh, apartheid regime and violation of congressional legislation, uh, uh, supported its attacks on neighboring countries that killed a million and a half people, uh, supported the Israeli atrocities in Lebanon, killed tens of thousands of people, and so on. And internally, he was in favor of large-scale government intervention in the economy. I mean, Reagan was the most protectionist president in post-war American history, with double protectionist barriers, uh, called on the Pentagon to uh, rescue deficient American management, uh, to teach them uh, modern uh, management techniques so that they could save the economy from Japanese takeover. I mean, to call this conservatism is a, you know, it's a bad joke. Uh, and the neocons, so-called, are even more extreme. Uh, so by today's standards, Buckley looks pretty moderate, I suppose.